It is a fact that we all follow someone. Uh, that's true even of the people who are leaders, presidents, um, kings, CEOs. They all are people that have followed someone. If you get on Amazon.com and type in leadership, there will be hundreds if not thousands of books available. And some of them are from very well-known names. You might read a book from uh, Colin Powell, uh, a book from Rudy Giuliani, or management guru Stephen Covey. And they will all give you good principles for how to lead effectively. And this sounds like somewhat of a boring topic, especially after the last couple of weeks where we've had some really um, hot button kind of topics. But the very fact that this sounds like it's not an important topic should alert us to the fact that we need to pay more careful attention. Because people don't, don't think about who they're allowing to be their leaders. Suppose you, uh, you chose to be a follower of Joseph Stalin or Adolf Hitler. Uh, things wouldn't turn out near as good as if you chose to follow somebody that was of more reputable reputation. So today, we're going to look at the topic of leadership, and, and rather than you tuning out and saying, well, I don't have to worry about this, I'm not a leader, hang in there, because I think you may find differently. All kinds of voices out there, and so what we're going to try to find out today is what we should be looking for. Let me read this again. Remember your leaders who taught you the Word of God. Think of all the good that has come from their lives, and follow the example of their faith. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever, so do not be attracted by strange new ideas. Your strength comes from God's grace, not from rules about food which don't help those who follow them. So the, the first thing we have to ask is, what leaders are we supposed to look at? And he says, leaders who taught you the word of God. So he says, what he's talking to us about are not just wild leaders or or business leaders, financial leaders. He's talking about spiritual leaders. Now, we need to define what a spiritual leader is. Initially, some people will say, well, okay, he's talking about pastors. Well, I would hope that pastors are included in this, but not every pastor would be considered a spiritual leader who spoke the Word of God to us, who taught the Word of God, because just because you read scripture in a, a, a church service doesn't mean that you're actually teaching scripture. Please understand that distinction. A couple of things, a couple of pastors that probably should not fall under this category. Those who preach what people want them to hear. We talk, the Bible talks about those who preach to, uh, to soothe the tickling ears of those who listen. Those who are building personal kingdoms rather than the kingdom of God. Those who are promoting a political agenda. Or those who every Sunday just get up and say, you just need to be nice people. And if you're nicer people, God will like you. Those people are not teaching the word of God. So they do not fit into this category of spiritual leaders who are teaching you the word of God. But by the same token, not all spiritual leaders are pastors. This category is much broader, and I would like to think, and I would hope, and I would pray that all of you are a spiritual leader to somebody. And so I would encourage you to, to think about this. You know, there are, there are pastors, there are teachers, but there are Sunday school teachers, there are parents, there are coaches, there are authors, there are um, radio pastors, TV pastors. There's all kinds of people out there who are trying to faithfully present the Word of God to the people around them. So what he tells us here is that we should look at the way these people live their lives. If they're going to teach us stuff, and we have to evaluate, can I trust this person? Should I follow this person? They're trying to teach the Bible, but should I follow them? Let me give you a list of some things that you should look for, some questions to ask. Do they try to live by the scripture that they teach? Or is their life completely different? Have you heard people say this? Oh, I heard that guy preach, but boy, that's not the way they live. Well, then you shouldn't follow that person. Do they have a spirit of humility? Are they honest about their ongoing struggles? Are they authentic? Fourth, do they possess a servant's heart? 
Fifth, do they reflect their faith in their dealings at home? Sixth, are they kind to others? Seventh, do they keep their temper under control? Eighth, are they honest in their business dealings? Ninth, do they get the sense, do you get the sense that these are people of prayer? Tenth, are people being impacted by their teaching in life? And then finally, are they respected by the community, by the people outside the church? Uh, periodically throughout the Bible, you see this, that when you're looking at leaders, you're supposed to say, are these people of good reputation? Now, this is a pretty tough list. But basically, what we're saying here is that when you're looking for a leader, when you're looking for somebody to follow, you want to find somebody who is consistent in the way that they live their life and in what they proclaim. Now, let's be honest. We know that everybody will fall short of that in some way. Everybody will fall off the horse, the white horse. Every knight falls off the white horse occasionally. But we're looking for somebody who the bent of their, their life is in this direction. And then what he tells us is that when you've examined their way of life, follow them, imitate them. Find people that you can um, emulate. Find people that you can learn from. Ask them questions. Watch what they're doing. Watch how they do things. Learn from them because others are going to learn from you. So how do we become godly leaders? If, if everybody's going to watch us Somebody's going to watch us over the course of time. How do we become a godly leader? Well, first, we need to remind ourselves that this is the work that is building God's kingdom and not our own. It's really not about us. It's about the Lord. It's about serving Him in a wonderful way. Um, some, of my, some of my favorite uh, leaders, some of the people that I follow in my life, are, are, are radio pastors and authors and, and you know, just a whole bunch of people that have impacted me enormously. And one of them is uh, Chuck Swindoll, and some of you have heard him on the radio with Insight for Living. Some of you read some of his myriad of books. And, and I saw Chuck at a... We're, we're, we're buddies, so I can call him Chuck. Um, I, I saw Chuck at a conference one time, and a big conference, uh, thousands of, of people there, and the thing that impressed me, I have no idea what Chuck spoke on that day, but the thing that impacted me was watching this man worship. It was an amazing thing. All these people there, and, and Chuck took off his glasses, and he was just singing to the Lord. He was completely lost in the presence of the Father. He had no concept of the... He was unimpressed by the amount of people that were in front of him. For that moment, it was him and the Lord that impressed me more than anything else. Alistair Begg is a pastor who teaches on a radio program called Truth for Life. He's a great, great teacher, wonderful sense of humor. And I had the privilege of seeing him at a, at a, a small pastor's conference. It was a pre-conference. There was just uh, maybe 40 of us present. And it was Alistair Begg and... Uh, Dr. James Montgomery Boyce, two luminaries in the Christian community. And the thing that impressed me about Begg was the fact that, that he took the gospel so seriously, but he didn't take himself seriously at all. He was, uh, he was very self-deprecating, and, and I came away saying, these are guys I want to follow because I see in them the character of Christ. So if we're going to be good leaders, we need to remember that it's not about us. Second, we need to let the Word of God teach us before we ever try to teach anybody else. You know, how do you teach something that you don't know? And so if we're going to be instructors of others, and we are, how are you going to teach your children the things of God if you don't know the things of God? So we must be people who sit under the teaching of the Lord. Our goal should be to communicate rather than to show people how smart we are. I used to try to get this across in a speech class that I would uh, occasionally teach at the high school when I was here in town. And I was always trying to tell them, you know, what is the goal of public speaking? Uh, I don't know. Of course, high school kids, they don't know nothing. And, uh, and I would say the goal of communication is to communicate. It's to communicate. Sounds so simple, doesn't it? Well, duh. Isn't that what it means? 
but this is a profound concept to some people. Have you ever been to a, a church service or a conference and, and you've left that conference or you left that church service and people say, how was it? Oh, boy, they, they were fantastic. They, they taught some good stuff. What they teach? Well, I don't actually know because I couldn't understand them, but, but they were really smart. They, oh, wow, they're really smart. Okay, guess what? You have not taught anything in that situation. You've been totally ineffective as a communicator. All you've communicated to people is, I'm smart, and you're not. That's not what we're called to do. We're called to communicate the truth of God to people who won't understand it unless we translate it to them. So we're trying to put it down on their level so that they are drawn into the word of God themselves. Next. We have to continually examine our own lives so that we ourselves do not become like the Pharisees. The Pharisees were good teachers. The problem was they became so wound up in teaching that they forgot that that teaching needed to be applied first to their own lives. There's a reason that in 2 Corinthians we're told to examine yourselves to see if you're in the faith. We need to do that continually. Am I, am I doing what I'm preaching and I'll be honest, there are times when I say what I'm preaching is something that I'm struggling with in my own life. But I try to be honest with you on that and say, you know, here's, here's the truth. This is what we're supposed to be doing. Mm, but it's tough, I know, because I'm struggling with this myself. So we should be people who are uh, continually examining our life. Fifth, we should teach and we should lead with fear and trembling. Uh, I think Rick would bear this out, that there is not a Sunday that we enter this pulpit where there's not a bit of fear and trembling. Because the book of James says, we who teach will incur a stricter judgment. That God is going to look at us and say, you know, you're leading people. Where are you leading them? Mm. Are you accurate? Are you teaching the truth? Are you handling the word of God rightly? It's a big deal. It's a significant task that we're up against. And then a reminder that, that leadership is not something that you, you earn. It is something that comes upon you. For example, you, you can be appointed the president of an organization. You can be made the um, pastor of a church. You can be made a CEO of an organization. That doesn't make you a leader. It may make you a boss. It may make you an authority figure. It does not make you a leader. A leader is somebody who, here's a concept, leads. A leader is somebody who has, inspires people to follow them. And so that's what we should be trying to do. We should be simple. We should be honest. We should be focused on the word of God and that we should be leading in a way where hopefully people will follow us. Now after this, he drops in verse 8 here. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. And, and as I was looking at this text, I thought, well, is this, is this actually the next idea, or is this still a carryover from this teaching thing? Why is this verse here? It's a great verse, and we like to put it on refrigerators and all that, but we want to ask, why is it here? What's the context of the verse? What, what is the author trying to get across? Now, after this, he says, do not be attracted by strange new ideas. Your strength comes from God's grace, not from rules about food, which don't help those who follow them. So it seems like he's still talking about teaching. He's still talking about leaders, good leaders and bad leaders, and in between, there's this section that says Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Why? Because I think what he's reminding us of is that even the best of men are only men at best. Even the best leaders in the world are going to let us down. They're going to disappoint us. They're going to have bad days. They're going to make some mistakes. And what I believe the author here is saying is that the leader that you ultimately need to be following is the one who never changes. Now, that doesn't mean Jesus is boring. You know, we would say, well, if something never changes, oh. you know, if you saw the same episode of a TV program night after night, wouldn't you get tired of that? What well, never changes? That's the problem. It never changes. That's not what, what's meant here. 
It, what the, the never-changing part of this is that, that he is consistent. He's consistent. The, the Jesus who died for us in the past, the Jesus who intercedes for us in the present, the Jesus who's coming for us in the future, is always consistent. He's always the same. We can trust him, first of all, because he defines truth. He knows what truth is. He will always lead us in the right direction. Because he is the truth. You don't have to worry about him leading you off into some wacko idea. If somebody is not teaching what Jesus is teaching, they are leading you astray. It's that simple. Where Jesus is taking us is where we need to go. Second, Jesus is the uh, one who is capable to lead us. He's not going to make any mistakes. He knows the way through any circumstance. No matter where we are, he's got the right advice. He's got the right teaching for us. And so he's telling us that we need to be people who are following Christ. And a lot of times we do that initially by following a solid teacher who is going to point us to the Word of God. Now, this is tough because um, anytime, you, anytime a pastor talks about leadership, it sounds self-serving. It's not meant to be that, and you know that we're not preaching on this text because I got an axe to grind. We're preaching on this text because, well, this is where we are, and this is what the Bible says, and if the Bible says it, then it's worth talking about. It's worth thinking about leadership. So let me conclude with some uh, final um, thoughts about what we're supposed to learn here. Number one, we all follow someone. It's natural. It's normal. It's the way things are designed. We determine our values from what we've been taught by other people. We need, therefore, to make sure that we are being taught well. The problem is that we're aware of some of our teachers. You know, our teachers in school, maybe our teachers in the church, our, um, our Sunday school teachers, youth leaders, things like that. We're, we're aware of them leading us. But we're also being taught by the media. We're being taught by commentators. We're being taught by the music that we listen to. All of these things are trying to lead us somewhere. And therefore, we need to be aware that we are people who are perpetually looking to follow someone or something. And what's happening in our society is that people are, you know, what's happening in the world is something like this. I'm going to follow this guy. Oh, oh, no, maybe this guy. Oh, well, oh, maybe this guy. And we're all over the place because we're not stopping to think and to ask ourselves a very simple question. Where is this person leading me? And is that the place that I need to be going? So we need to understand that there are good leaders and bad leaders, and we need to be conscious about who we are following. Second, not only will we follow someone, but we will likely have someone following us. Maybe your child. Maybe a child in the Sunday school class you teach. It may be a coworker. Maybe even somebody who just watches you from a distance. A little creepy, and it? Kind of stalkerish. Mm -hmm. But the fact is, you are likely leading someone. And if people know that you call yourself a Christian, they're drawing conclusions about Christianity and about Jesus from watching you. You are leading them. The question we need to ask is, are we leading them in the right direction? Are we leading them to the correct destination? Are we leading them down some rabbit trail of things that really don't matter at all? It's a terrifying question. And that's why it's so important for you and I to keep our eyes on Jesus. We need to be trying to lead people as he did, with the same kind of spirit that he did. The things that were important to him should be important to us. The things that weren't important to him, we should recognize aren't all that important. Third, we can only lead if we know where we're going. Would it be silly to go up to somebody and say, hey, could, could, you, could you tell me how to get to uh, Nashville? Sure, just follow me. But this person has no idea where they're going. Driving all over the place. 
two days later, you say, do you really know where Nashville is? I figure we'll find it eventually. <laughs> I could have done that myself. Uh, and, and, and so we need to understand that we can't lead somebody if we don't know where we're going. Jesus said, I am the way, I am the truth, I am the life. No man comes to the Father except through me. So if we are not following Christ, then there's no way we can lead people to the way, the truth, or the life. It's impossible. People say, I can tell you how to have a better life. Not if you don't include Jesus. Not the best life. I'm teaching you the truth, not if it's contradictory to Jesus, because he is the way, he is the truth, he is the life. We must be seeking him. So the question that you and I need to ask ourselves is, are we one of his followers? We can't lead other people to the kingdom of God until we have arrived there ourselves in one sense, until we ourselves have a citizenship there. So do you? Do you? Are you a person who um, merely attends church, or are you a person who has given your life to Christ? Are you a person who puts a Bible on a shelf, or are you the person who listens to it as the word of life that's going to speak to you and point you to the one who died for you, the one who called you before you were even born? Are you a person who has made that commitment to Christ? It's not a matter of being good. It's not a matter of being uh, holy. It's a matter of trusting him and bringing the broken pieces of our lives and saying, Lord, I can't make it without you. And then it's a matter of allowing him to change us. And finally, I want to remind you that the greatest need of leadership in our day is consistency. Isn't that the most frustrating thing about looking at some of the political leaders? They make all these great boasts. They pass these laws that they themselves are breaking. And we become completely cynical. We start assuming that every leader is going to hurt us. And as a result, we don't follow anyone wholeheartedly. But what happens is that that makes us um, subject, that makes us vulnerable to the more subversive teachers. To gain credibility as a leader, our job is to follow the Lord consistently. In fact, whether you're a leader or not, that's what God calls his people to do, follow consistently. People are watching, and they are quick to dismiss anyone who is not consistent. Before we can be a good leader, we must first be a good follower. The one we follow, or at least the one we should follow, is Jesus. And if we are following him fervently and wholeheartedly, other people are going to notice. And then they too will want to follow him. And they may just do so in the beginning by following you. So let's pray. Father, how easy it is to shrug these commands off because we figure they apply to somebody else when the truth is you have called us all to be faithful witnesses. In that sense, even people that we may not see, people we may not know, friends that are apart from Christ are looking at us. And Lord, that terrifies us because we know how inconsistent we are. We know we still have flaws. We know that, that the work is far from over in our lives. But we pray, Lord, that you would help us to live consistently, that you would help us to be good learners. We pray that you would raise up before us examples to follow, people to learn from. Help us to learn how to pray by watching people who pray. Help us to learn how to read our Bibles from people who are able to teach the Scriptures effectively. Help us learn how to be compassionate to others by watching those people who show mercy in a way that it's profound. Help us, Father, to share our faith by watching those who do so effectively. Lord, we pray that you would raise up leaders, people that we can model our lives after that will lead us to you. And then, Father, having learned, help us to lead others. We ask in Jesus' name. Amen.